welcome guests, staying connected, get it done. <laughs> uh, garden, worship, um, feed the poor, uh, vicar from outside, and the garden is exciting. Oh, vicar from outside. View from outside. Oh, 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 view. Oh, the view from the view outside. From outside. Right. We do also have a vicar who comes and we do. Yeah, yeah, Steve, did you imagine? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 Steve, yeah, Steve is me. great. Steve is great. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Oh, your garden yeah. is exceptional. Thank you. It is a beautiful garden this year. Oh, it, is. it is the most beautiful <coughs> garden we've ever had. I've never seen such beautiful produce go anywhere. It's so just I'm going to ask a question. What did you, uh, just popcorn it, and we're only going to take a minute. What did you hear? Out, 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 and the same thing. Community. Community. Yes. is who's our, what's our identity? Who are we at our faith level? What are we here for? Who is our neighbor? And how are we related to our neighbor? That's our formation. Stability, fruit, we have fruit, when, you're, when you're stable, you have fruitful and sustainable ministry, institutionally and spiritually. It's a time when the elements of organizational life fit together money, vision for ministry, property, people. Stability can be a place of health, or it can tip into feeling stagnant or stale, where growth is stalling and new opportunities are being ignored. This tip sometimes experiences is experienced as membership plateaus and then follows with declining membership. The decline is characterized by a fall off in number Decline in energy, fear, blame, confusion in the system, a focus on small things rather than central issues, and disintegration is marked by conflict, hopelessness, feeling stuck, the inability of internal leaders to affect change, and ultimately what can come from that is death. Now, there are some arrows going down here. So if you're a healthy church, which is basically here, we're healthy, there's ongoing renewal. So you're going to see this kind of rotation of formation and identifying and working together. When you start to get between stability and stagnant, you're still working with ongoing renewal and then revitalization. So it's working to make some changes that can occur. But again, if you're doing this, it kind of creates that, the cycle, it creates a different cycle. When you're in decline, you get to choose. Are you going to redevelop? So there's this redevelopment phase. Again, decline, and we have fit cycle, cycle. When you get to disintegration, you need outside intervention to help you get back to formation to start again. So any questions about that? I'm going to ask you to actually get up out of your chairs, form a line, and I'm going to have you mark on this piece of paper where you think we are as a congregation. And I'm going to have you all use a red marker. So when you're ready, come on up and mark where you think we are. And how do you want us to mark? Is it the An X is fine. So X marks your spot. <laughs> Notoriously negative. No, it's appreciative inquiry day. 
you for your feedback. So now we're going to tell you a little bit about what's going on here at St. Albans so that you can think about your thing a little bit more. So a uh, um, month or so ago, you should have received a letter in the mail asking for financial assistance for our capital campaign. And we are doing that. We, we requested this money because, A, we need to have matching money for the CBCP grant. But B, because we don't have enough resources to take care of the things that we want to do downstairs and do the one really important thing that will benefit the church, which is replace our dishwasher <laughs> for the tune of like $4,000. So, or $10,000, depending on how you do that. So it's a large number, and that's why it had to be taken care of. Um, that's why we do a lot of hand washing for paper products, um, which isn't always a good thing. But, so we've asked you to consider how you can help by providing a financial commitment to the church specifically for this work that we're doing. We ask for, because, because you know, why not be clever and match a dollar for dollar? You know, $10,800 is what we've received, what we're receiving from these grants, so why not try to match it? And if we don't need all that money, we will take the excess and we will put it into our declining rapidly financial budget for our operating expenses. So that's what that's about. And so if you've seen downstairs, you've seen work, you have you understand more about the hope that we have for that. Mm -hmm. And to talk a little bit more about where we sit specifically are with the uh, downstairs project. Uh, as I mentioned, for those that were downstairs, we have a technology upgrade in the works so that we can upgrade our Wi-Fi in this building, currently it, it functions in the library, in the office area, and maybe down at this end of the room. You know we can't use it in the sanctuary, that's why we've never had live services online. We don't have that capacity. So why, while we couldn't do that, we were recording them, getting them online ourselves. Okay, so that's the background on the technology. Um, the work on the garden level, that, that's what we're calling the basement, thanks to Bethany, because there are windows. You know, you look outside, it is a garden level. It, so we've, um, we still need to complete the shelving painting that you saw us working on, Gail and I, new carpet for the center area, and then fur furnishings for the shared work area. We envision that the renters will um, furnish their own space. They're not providing furnishings. Uh, for the specific projects that we are doing with the, 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 uh, from the grant for CBCP, uh, I, I mentioned early, we now have to go back to the vendor that quoted the work and say we want to get the installation of the cameras, the ADA compliant door, and the keyless entry system. So uh, we'll be working towards that. And we are actively recruiting renters. We have had thoughts that we had a good potential <laughs> That has not come to fruition yet, but that individual um, is actually, as mentioned earlier, she's with the Community Development Corporation of the area. And she uh, wrote back to us the other day that she would like to uh, sponsor a open house for our space to bring in community members so that people can see it. So that is on our, let's, as soon as we can get the, the space looking, get those shelves done, I think we can schedule something for that, like, as soon as possible. And uh, we're in conversation with um, their commu uh, Devington communities. Um, I've got a call with uh, their uh, president just reiterating what's going on here. They're aware of it, but uh, we have an upcoming meeting in September, in early September, and I'll again be stressing with the folks there that we are, we are actively seeking renters for our spaces. And anything that anyone else can do is helpful. And then we're going to have, as far as where we are today financially, uh, Margie's going to give us a, an update of where we are, the numbers, the numbers. Financially, our backs are against the wall. Come a little closer to the microphone. Just recording like that. So okay. So I will repeat that. Financially, our backs are against the walls. And we have been in this trajectory probably since I've been treasurer, and I was trying to remember how long I've been treasurer, it's between 10 and 12 years. 2010. 
Okay. Um, so anyway, just just some brief historical information here. Um, in 2014, um, our pledge commitment for the year was $118,000. In 2016, our pledge commitment for the year was $104,500. In 2018, our pledge commitments for the year were $91,240. In 2020, our pledge commitments for the year, and that year there were 25 pledges. In 2020, two years ago, it was $89,000. In 2022, this year, we had 20 pledges um, for $65,000 for the year. So you can see how this has gone down. And in 2014, I didn't have the numbers of pledges each year, but I know when I first became treasurer, we were having about 40 to 45 people pledge a year, and now we're down to 20 people making a pledge a year. So our current financial situation, we had projected this year a budget deficit of $50,000. And um, we did not build in, we, we did a very realistic budget. We did not put anything in, um, assuming we were gonna get renters in the rooms downstairs. So our current rental income comes from three AA groups and Butter, Buttermilk Mountain um, that makes the dog biscuits here several times a month. So right now, information I want here. So right now our average monthly fixed expenses run just under eleven thousand dollars. And those include buildings and grounds expenses, um, lawn mowing, uh, when we need to, you know, maintenance on our um, heating cooling system. Uh, things like that. That's $3,500. That includes snow removal in the winter. Um, and also our utilities. Our administrative expenses monthly are seven thousand, just under $7,500. And that includes a half-time rector salary and pension um, and apportionment, which is what we pay the diocese each month. And they set that each year for each congregation. And I want to note that we have been unable, or we have not paid our apportionment the last two months, and the diocese is aware of this because of our financial situation. And this year's apportionment is $1,724 a month. Also included in the administrative is internet, website, uh, software, and our internet exp expense, monthly internet expense will be going up significantly when we um, get the new internet um, installed hopefully in the next 60 days it'll go from about $70 a month to probably between $250 and $300 a month. So with fixed monthly expenses of $11,000 the income that we can count on coming in each month um, I said we had 20 pledges for this year and of those 20 pledges four have been paid in full already. Um, 12 members 12 of those 20 pay monthly, so I can count on that monthly income. And that monthly income from those 12 pledges is $4,240. And then we also have the known rental income, which is the three AA groups in the Buttermilk Mountain, and that income is $440 a month. And then we have diocesan aid or assistance, which is $1,250 a month. So the income that we can count on each month is around $6,000, and our expenses each month are $11,000. Now, so there's, there's the gap. And if you read the financial health article in our monthly newsletter, you will see that every month we're between a two and a $5,000 deficit, which has put us at a $20,000 deficit right now for the year. And um, what was I gonna say here? We've been on this trajectory you know, for 10 years, and we've, we've taken action to kind of assist this. We've taken measures, and through the years, and I kind of started with as far back, we eliminated Mary Toby's position, which was our secretary, and we paid benefits and health insurance for her. 
And then um, after that, um, prior to Debbie coming, we opened our facility up to renters. We had Diana Singleton that was a psychologist, psychiatrist. Um, we had Grace and Mercy, uh, another small African-American church that was with us until just after the pandemic or in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, and we had Worthmore Academy for four or five years downstairs. So um, then we needed some major, major things addressed. We needed a new HVAC unit. Uh, we needed to repair a parking lot. We needed to um, replace the entry area cement. It was cracked. It was a danger to um, our parishioners coming to church. So we took out a revolving loan with the diocese for $43,000 in 2019 that we're paying off over a 10 year period. Uh, we've rene renegotiated service contracts. Um, we've changed our trash pickup to instead of weekly to twice weekly we i'm sorry twice a month from once yes. from once a week to twice a month thank you um we have not replaced our organist after we lost him so that was a cost savings and ironically as it is covid proved to be a benefit for us and really helped us out for a two-year period because we got $18,200 in PPP money that we did not have to um, pay back. And additionally, we got um, apportionment relief from the diocese and pension relief for Debbie's pension from the church pension group. So that, that really helped us out. But um, like I said, right now, our back's against the wall and the whole money piece is tied to a membership piece. You know, we're not getting the money in because we don't have the membership, and so that's where we are. And, uh, oh, yes, and um, Brendan O'Sullivan Hale, who's the canon, um, and I forget his official title, but he oversees kind of the treasures in each of the, um, the churches, and he uh, contacted me and said, and, and recently we've um, requested uh, two donations from our investment account. Withdrawals. Withdrawals. Um, when I first started, we had a savings account, and that savings account dissolved years ago. Um, we do have an investment account with the diocese, and as of the first of this year, it had $35,000 in it, but with um, the state of the economy, it's, you know, it's lost money, as everybody's investment <coughs> accounts have lost money, and then we um, borrowed we transferred $5,000 of it in July to our checking account to help cover expenses in July and recently requested an additional transfer that the vestry votes on and that money will be coming shortly to help pay expenses for the coming month, September. So our investment account is now down to about $22,000. So anyway, um, after reviewing and seeing, I submit our month monthly financial reports to the diocese and Brendan contacted me out of concern, and um, we are, Debbie had, prior to that, had requested with um, the bishop's uh, admin administrator a meeting for Joan, myself, and Debbie to talk to them and find out, you know, what our options are, let them know exactly where we are right now financially and membership-wise, and we're hoping that that's going to happen in the next several weeks. And there's one other thing that changed that you didn't mention. Yes. I went half time. Oh, I thought I did mention that in measures. Well, I did mention it somewhere, but in the buildings and grounds, we pay a half time rent first. So, yeah. But she is doing buildings and grounds too because we don't have a buildings and grounds person. But it's important. I mean, it, there's been sacrifices for for a lot of things for us to be able to do what we're doing. Right. And um, and so, but we, we while we we're trying to keep this as appreciative as we can, there's truth. And if we don't tell you the truth and we don't tell you the reality of our circumstances, we can't be appreciative because then we're lying. And so who we are is a lot of these things. We are all of these things that we, we just listed on that page. We are also in a financial situation. 
So I would like you to now come back up here and remark this with where you think they are. So did anything you what learned, you just heard. did anything that you just heard change right. what you believe your mark should be? Yeah. So come yeah. on up and um, we're not sustainable.
I'll take it for you. Thank you, baby. Anybody else got one over here ready? Ready there? I can't think of a third. That's okay. Oh. You don't, you know? Thanks, Rabbi. You know, she gets sparks and fresh. <laughs> Just to kind of summarize here, we'll give you uh, a list and we'll have time to kind of converse during our lunch about this. Um, which is full-time Debbie, choir director, fully rented basement, develop membership, uh, continuous services, column Bay and continuous, stay open. Continue to worship in sanctuary, all office space rented downstairs, garden, Uh, in marketplace, younger congregation, <laughs> yeah. more people doing work, bigger congregation, uh, building become a community center and not our responsibility, i.e. become renters, we become renters, oh, oh. interesting, I like that, sell the building it sounds like, if it's up pledges, you know, so like you can sometimes hear, I up my pledge, up yours, <laughs> <laughs> get more members, get renters, uh, that we stay open, that we worship God every Sunday, that we serve our congregation, options from the diocese to become sustainable individuals to fulfill leadership positions, renters, sustainability, membership growth, that we can, can consistently encourage new members to attend, that Deb can go back to full time, uh, renters. More money from varied income, income sources, more people, doesn't need to mean members. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Financial stability, more pledges, rentals, increased membership, financial stability, continued loving environment, and the return of game night and date night. <laughs> can, I, can I just add something here? Yes. More people, more pledges. That's a really nice thought, but look like what Margie was saying, the 10-year trajectory we've been on, it's not going to be what's going to get us through. We will be a dead church before that happens unless some of these other things can happen yeah. first. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that that's what this really conversation is about. Okay. This conversation, this question is what are our three concrete wishes for our future and not why they may not work. Okay. Right. Yeah. Part. Okay. okay. Right. So yeah, we are because we just heard something that wasn't really pleasant. Yeah. So now it's time to think about what's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, what do we want? What do we right. hope for? Right. right. So we're gonna pop, we're gonna leave this here for right now, and we're because we are at the end. We're gonna take like the next five minutes. We're gonna take an extra few minutes of your time, and we are gonna just we're gonna tell you how we feel. Somebody who's here, what do they tell you when you're when you're selling them something? Don't sell them for me. Isn't that the coward thing? <laughs> I used to play baseball here. Yeah. 
I'm so happy that you're here, that you're doing this. Thank you for this beautiful garden. It means so much to our neighborhood. It goes back to that meeting that we went to have in December of the neighborhood leaders telling us how important we are. So while it feels like you know we're looking for atta girls and atta boys from across from the neighbors, right now we kind of need that because we need that appreciation to be able to feel like we can get ourselves back up and out of some of the stuff we're in the middle of. And the fact that so many of you come on Tuesday, Tuesdays and help us set up, sell, and take down, and you, and you engage with the neighbors is important. What we need to do more than that is invite them to help in other ways, if they can. I have faith in this community. I have faith in this community. Because I live in this community. <laughs> yes, you do. But I have faith in the people around this, these tables, but and, the, and faith with the people who are not around this table today. Because one thing that Marge may not have said very clearly is that you've been faithful. You've been financially faithful to this to the, to the community, to the church. You've been given, you haven't given up financially. Some of you even increased your pledges or maybe pledged for the first time for this year. And while those numbers seem like they keep going down and down and down, when we see that some of those pledges have increased and that you are faithfully giving, whether it's whether you're here on a Sunday or not, because there are checks that come in the mail. You are faithful to this community because you believe in this community of faith, this church, these people who you have de de devoted years to. All of us have devoted years to this community. Even Melissa, who's been here only the shortest amount of time, has devoted years to this community. And then there's commitment. I see your commitment and, it, and I'm, I mean, I've been so committed to making sure that we can have the things that we need to be able to get us rented. I mean, I've been pushing buttons and making phone calls and having meetings and doing the things and going to training I want to go to <laughs> to, to, to learn stuff so that we have reasons to be here that are beyond ourselves. It's why we pray every single Sunday, and it's in our, in our prayer list, we're praying for the the leaders of St. Olive, which I changed that this time, and I said, I pray for all of us, so because we can't do this alone. And we all need to be part of finding other people to take this journey with us. As Barb said, yes, I'm a part of this community. I live two streets over, and I've lived in this community for a long, long time. Seven years. For a long time. And I came to St. Albans from another Episcopal church because I'm a lifelong Episcopalian. And when I moved, I came to the closest one. I've been here for a long time. I've seen it go through the changes. And as Margie said today, we have been on this path for some time. We were there, the brink was there. We always kept from going over. Now, just making it's not gonna do at this point, but I do have hope. I do have hope because I think we're this close to making something real down, downstairs. But we gotta get through this period of time that we don't have this rent that we need very, very much. Growth is wonderful, growth has gotta be part of it. But my hope is that we can still maintain this little family, which has been part of my life for most of my adult life. The faith, we gotta have faith. That's why I come to church, that's why I praise God, that's why I'm here. And commitment, are committed and I'm willing to continue the work but we've got to figure out this getting through this period right now. Yep. Um, when I started coming here it was before they had that fire and the fire destroyed everything and we grew from that you know we still picked ourselves up and 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 made it and so I'm encouraged that we can do that
And she wanted to remind us. fundamental piece about being Christian. We believe in resurrection. Even to the grave, we make our song hallelujah. This is not the end. But you have to allow things to die. And we all remember Bishop Kate. Resurrection only works on dead things. <laughs> and it's hard to let go of the past doesn't mean you let go of the core, but it means they may look different because they're going to live, go through resurrection and be born looking like something new that will still incarnate the love of God in this people. So it's so, you know, this just seems such can be like a hopeless thing, but maybe there's a momentum here that is truly allowing Thank you, I like that. change as we learn and as we grow and so your point of you being here today is to learn so that we can if we need to, if we're at this resurrection place that we can resurrect or if we want if we feel here how are we going to get outside intervention so that we can start again so that's what we're here to do today and that's what we're here to talk about today why we did this so what we're going to do now is um, you're going to have two handouts one of them which one do you have? Okay. Is the yellow? Okay. The yellow one, I think, is the is a commitment form. It is asking you what you are available, what you can do to help us through this next time. It is it is a there is a line asking how much money are you willing to put into this right now. Uh, that is over and above your your current budget. We need another one over there. Or it, is it going to be? And then there's one for whether you can donate to the, to the process downstairs. Um, some of it is, can you physically do some things to help? Or what are you willing to do? How are you going to open your mouth to the world to let them know what's going on? So if you can please fill that out. And we need your names on this because we want to keep, because we are being held accountable for what we say we're going to do. And if you need more time than just this morning to do that, or the time together, just get it back as soon as we can. Other 
I did yes. come here yes. as well. Yes. Yes. yes, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mother. Really yes. important. Yes, yes. Did you put something on this? Is that part of the capital campaign? Or is well, it depends on how you respond. Is this yet a third the, campaign? No, it's the same no. campaign that's been advertised. Okay. Okay. Right. That first one is the same one we've talked about. If you've already made your payment, we're asking you to put that amount there just to reaffirm that that's what you did. I'm going to put this basket where you can put them right here um, when you're ready. But we're going to ask you to just pause for a minute because we want to get lunch going and some people have to get out the door. So we're going to have a closing prayer. And then at lunch, we're, if you would please you know, focus maybe a little bit on your appreciative wishes at your table. Talk about your wishes for this congregation and what your hopes are for this congregation. Let's try to keep it as positive as we can. And, if, and this is where the salmon sheet, if you did this after lunch, it might be, might be more beneficial for you because you might have more things that you glean from those conversations. But before you leave, um, if you could do that, that would be great. But we're going to do prayer, and then we're going to get lunch out for you. Um, so, the Lord be with you. And also with you. That in all our works begun, continued, and ended in thee, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your mercy obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And a prayer for grace. Holy One, you bring us together to learn and to grow, but usually one of the greatest places where we learn and grow the most is when we eat together. Bless the food that we are about to receive. Bless the hands that prepared it and for those who will be cleaning up after it. And give us nourishment to do all of the things that you have given us to do, even when we feel like we might not have all of our stuff together. Help St. Albans to do what needs to be done and to be the place of people who are here to serve you. 